Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, March 3, 2020. Join us for the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro the thir the third. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via streaming worldwide through UNTV News and Rescue Facebook account and UNTVWeb.com. I am William Theo. And here are the headlines. New coronavirus cases outside China spread more rapidly than within, according to the World Health Organization. Coronavirus death toll in the United States of America rises to six as the U.S. pushes for more testing kits. The Philippines relaxes travel restrictions on South Korea amid the COVID-19 outbreak. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III orders an investigation on the Green Hills Mall management and a security agency after yesterday's hostage-taking incident. African swine fever hits four barangays in Laurel, Batangas. And the NHA Builders edges the Judiciary Magis to finish in third place for the second time in the UN TV Cup. The new coronavirus appears to now be spreading much more rapidly outside China than within. The World Health Organization says it is unique but could be contained with the right measures. Kaf Tumaraos details why. The number of new coronavirus cases outside China was almost nine times higher than that inside the country over the last 24 hours, World Health Organization officials said Monday. As epidemics spread across other continents, new cases in China are falling. According to the WHO, just 206 new cases of the coronavirus COVID-19 on Sunday, the lowest number of new cases in that country since January 22nd. Outside China, a total of 8,739 cases of COVID-19 have been reported to WHO from 61 countries with 127 deaths. In the last 24 hours, there were almost nine times more cases reported outside China than inside China. The epidemics in the Republic of uh, uh, Korea, Italy, Iran and Japan are our greatest concern. Of the other 57 affected countries, 38 have reported 10 cases or fewer, Tedros said. 19 countries have reported only one case, and some countries have contained the virus and haven't reported in the last two weeks, he said. Tedros said health officials would not hesitate to declare the outbreak a pandemic if that's what the evidence suggests. On Friday, the WHO chief said that most cases of COVID-19 can still be traced to known contacts or clusters of cases, and there isn't any evidence as yet that the virus is spreading freely in communities. Dr. Mike Ryan, executive director of WHO's Health Emergencies Program said, scientists still don't know exactly how COVID-19 behaves, saying it's not like influenza. Ryan also said health officials do not think countries aren't being transparent, saying it's very easy to be caught unaware in an epidemic situation. WHO officials Friday increased the risk assessment of the coronavirus to high to very high at a global level. Health officials have said the respiratory disease is capable of spreading through human-to-human -human contact, droplets carried through sneezing and coughing, and germs left on inanimate objects. The virus appears to be particularly troublesome for older people and those with underlying health conditions, health officials have said. Symptoms can include a sore throat, runny nose, fever or pneumonia, and can progress all the way to multiple organ failure or death in some severe cases. Kat Numaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. The World Health Organization does not consider the coronavirus disease 2019 as a pandemic at this point. Meanwhile, the case of a dog that tested positive for COVID-19 is isolated. Aiko Miguel details why. The World Health Organization explains why the term pandemic should not be used for now. 
to describe the scope of or to classify the coronavirus disease or COVID-19. WHO will continue to use the term public health emergency of international concern at high risk assessment, although there are new cases recorded in different parts of the world every hour. According to Dr. Rabindra Abiya Singha, WHO country representative, COVID-19 cannot be compared to the spread of the H1N1 pandemic in 2009. Using the term pandemic, causes a lot of uh, anxiety at a global level and may not be the best uh, kind of response we want to encourage countries. According to WHO's assessment, COVID-19 can be contained through the prevention of community transmission. There is no local transmission yet in the Philippines, but the WHO country representative advises the Philippine government to gear up the health sector for the possibility of local transmission. In other countries like Italy and South Korea, local transmission has occurred unexpectedly. It means that you need to prepare your whole health system and your whole of government actually because you wouldn't know actually where the transmission would start. WHO also clarifies that the recorded case of a dog in Hong Kong that tested positive for COVID-19 is an isolated case. This is one dog which is reported to have been tested positive. We know that coronaviruses infect dogs. In fact, coronavirus infection in dogs results in dogs getting acute diarrhea. We have no evidence to date of COVID-19 infecting domestic animals. WHO also advises animal health experts to further study whether it is possible for an animal to be infected with COVID-19 to establish a concrete study on such mode of infection. The Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Disease will also conduct a study on the case. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News & Rescue, Manila. The number of U.S. deaths from coronavirus has risen from two to six, all in the Seattle suburb of Kirkland, Washington, where health authorities are battling an outbreak in a nursing home. Justin Masakayan reports. Six people in the Seattle area have died of illness caused by the new coronavirus as authorities across the United States scramble to prepare for more infections with an emphasis on increasing testing capacity. Eight of the 14 total cases are linked to an outbreak at a nursing facility in the Seattle suburb of Kirkland, including four deaths. At least four of the six people who died were either elderly or had underlying health conditions, or both. The total number of cases detected by the public health system in Washington state now stands at 18, the most of any state. In addition to the 14 King County cases, four residents of nearby Snohomish County have tested positive for the virus. We expect the number of cases will continue to increase in the coming days and weeks, and we're taking this situation extremely seriously. However, health officer for the Seattle and King County Public Health Agency also said the vast majority of diagnosed patients have mild to moderate symptoms and do not need hospitalization. Our state public health laboratory now has the capacity to test about 200 specimens a day um, and we are keeping up with these requests. Food and Drug Administration Commissioner Stephen Hahn said he expects that by the end of this week, close to 1 million coronavirus tests will be completed. Duchin said his county was not recommending school closures or cancellations of any events. As of Sunday, the number of confirmed and presumptive cases in the United States had risen to 91, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said. Many of those were among people repatriated to the United States either from the Diamond Princess cruise ship previously quarantined in Japan or from the city of Wuhan. So far, 10 states, including California and New York, have confirmed or presumed cases. Trump and his administration has asked pharmaceutical companies to accelerate work on the development of a coronavirus vaccine. As early as this week, the U.S. Congress could debate and pass emergency funding, possibly in the range of 6 to $8 billion, to help 
battle the virus and aid businesses. Justin Masakayan, UNTV News and Rescue USA. The Philippine government that relaxes the travel restrictions imposed on South Korea. Philippine authorities have allowed Filipinos to travel to South Korea except to North Yonsang Province, Daegu City, and Cheongdu County, where the COVID-19 outbreak in the fellow Asian country is concentrated. This as approved in the meet meeting of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases today. However, however, Filipino travelers who intend to visit other parts of South Korea should execute and sign a declaration to signify their knowledge and understanding of the risks involved in their trip. Meanwhile, the Department of Foreign Affairs is now preparing for the repatriation of Filipinos from Macau. The Health Department records 87 COVID-19 cases of Filipinos outside the Philippines. Meanwhile, the DOH assures all 26 Korean nationals who arrived in the country one day before the travel ban on South Korea will complete their self-imposed quarantine period. Aiko Miguel reports why. All 26 Korean nationals who arrived in Cebu in February 25 have been traced and accounted for. The last one was located on Monday night, who is now with seven others. They are undergoing self-imposed quarantine in a hotel in Cebu City. The Korean nationals came from Daegu City, which has recorded the most number of COVID-19 cases in South Korea. According to the health department, it will make sure all 26 will complete the 14-day home quarantine period. All of these 26 South Koreans, when they came here, did not have any signs and symptoms. But they have a history of travel coming from Daegu, so we consider them person under monitoring. Meanwhile, the test results of the samples from four repatriates from Japan who have manifested symptoms of respiratory infection have been released. As of today, 14 out of 15 repatriates who are isolated in a health facility have tested negative for COVID-19. One confirmatory test result has yet to be released. The health department has so far recorded 87 COVID-19 cases of Filipinos in different countries as of today. The 87th case is in Singapore, which brings the count in the Lion City to three. I, Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Quarantine is on alert for a foreign cargo vessel expected to arrive in Davao City tomorrow. A quarantine officer assures strict protocols will be observed. Dante Amento will tell us why. Bulk carrier Harmony 6, which came from Yangsu City, Jiangsu Province, China, is expected to arrive in Davao City tomorrow. From China, the Panama-flagged sea vessel passed through La Union before it docks in Davao City. The Philippine Ports Authority and the Bureau of Quarantine are on alert for the arrival of the foreign vessel. A team from the Bureau of Quarantine is ready to conduct health inspection on the crew members of the ship. Kung galing sila sa China, mayroon kaming protocol na uh, daily uh, temperature from the departure kung saan sila kasi mayroon na kung bigay na memorandum sa kanila pinadala sa mga kapitan kung darating pagdating dito chin check uh, kina counter check namin on board the ship are 23 Vietnamese and Indian crew members the DOH says it has allowed the disembarkation of cargos from the ship when it arrives in Davao City but precautionary measures must be observed alamaw galing China uh, binomboarding namin yan with complete gadget ang mga boarding official namin tapos uh, pinadidesearch namin ang cargo kung wala pang incubation period then we advise the captain and the agent no with restriction no discharging uh, no disembarking and embarking of crew the ship is expected to remain in Davao City for a week. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Now let's get the latest tally of the coronavirus cases around the world. The viral outbreak that began in China has infected 89,073 people globally in 74 countries. With first cases reported in Saudi Arabia, 
Jordan, Tunisia, Czech Republic, and Scotland. Still, the overwhelming majority of cases of the infection are in mainland China, which has reported 80,151 cases and 2,944 deaths. South Korea is still second to the most confirmed cases outside China, with a total of 4,812 cases and 28 fatalities. In the European hotspot of Italy, the number of infections doubled in 48 hours with 2,036 confirmed cases and 52 deaths. Iran, meanwhile, has 1,501 confirmed cases and 66 fatalities, the highest outside China. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, 639 persons are under investigation or PUIs for possible COVID-19. The number of admitted PUIs at medical facilities are now 23. Meanwhile, the number of discharged PUIs is at 613. The total number of confirmed cases in the country remains at 3. Welcome back. The Labor Department wants to look into the labor practice of the mall management and of the security agency that deployed the hostage taker in an incident in Green Hills yesterday. Ray Pelayo tells us why. The operation of V-Mall in Green Hills, San Juan City stopped yesterday because of a hostage taking incident that began before 12 noon. The perpetrator was a security guard of the mall gone a wall. But today, the mall opened its doors to customers just like any other mall day. The operation seemed normal, but in the administration office on the second floor, no information officer was present. Only security guards accommodated the UNTV news team. They said that no one could face us for an interview. They added that any information should come only from the PNP and Mayor Francis Zamora because the management had already given a statement. Several clients had a hard time processing their transactions due to the lack of mall personnel. A donut company even collected payment for the products eaten by authorities during yesterday's incident. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III has instructed to investigate if the security agency and the mall management meet labor standards. Secretary Bello adds they will weigh the situation that pushed the hostage taker to act lawlessly. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, San Juan City. Meanwhile, the palace says that President Rodrigo Duterte is content with the action of the police during yesterday's hostage-taking incident. Meanwhile, the PNP will investigate if the hostage-taker security agency must be held accountable. Lea Ilagan details why. The Supervisory Office for Security and Investigation Agencies, or SOSHA, sees no accountability on the part of the Suscor Armor Security Corporation in relation to the hostage drama yesterday in a Green Hills mall based on SOSHA's initial investigation. According to SOSHA Director, Police Brigadier General Michael John Dubria, the license of hostage taker Alchi Parai is valid until 2021. On the other hand, the security agency's license to operate will expire this month. The agency is also a licensed agency. They have a current license to operate. They employed a licensed security guard. So at first glance, no, wala, silang, wala silang liability. Following yesterday's incident, SOSHA will inspect establishments where security guards deployed by SASCOR are posted. Police add that they have recovered a firearm with no serial number from Parai. If further investigation reveals that Suscor lets its security guards use unlicensed firearms, the security agency will face charges and sanctions. Meron tayong first-time offender. 
uh, may monetary penalty po yun, uh, ranging from 10,000 to 30,000 pesos, plus uh, without prejudice to the re recommendation for their cancellation or revocation of their license. PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa, for his part, admits he is content with the security measures laid out by the National Capital Region Police Office. Generally, I'm satisfied because nobody died, which is the most important thing. The PNP chief adds, however, the crowd control and the use of cell phone bystanders should be looked into. General Gomboa also explains the conduct of a press conference where the suspect was allowed to speak. There was even a question, why allow him to go on a press conference? The reason behind there is tactical. The PNP chief adds that the protocols in a hostage-taking scene include deploying a negotiator and a crisis management committee led by local chief executive. He explains that police and military personnel will enter the scene when the local government cannot contain the situation anymore and later done the entry of the LGU. Even President Rodrigo Duterte is also content with how the LGU and the PNP handled the hostage-taking incident in V-Mall. This despite comments on why the hostage-taker were allowed to run before the media. Well, he was happy that there was no, no casualty except for one. There, is, there was only one. For as long as people are alive, we welcome it. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, come crummy. Several journalists and netizens criticized the Philippine National Police's efforts in containing the hostage taker in San Juan City yesterday. Authorities, meanwhile, explain why the distraught security guard was allowed to speak before the media. Dante Amento tells us why. Media personnel covered the almost 10-hour hostage drama that happened in a San Juan City mall yesterday. The incident ended before 9 p.m. when the suspect finally surrendered to authorities. But netizens observed that no authority checked whether he was no longer holding any firearms when he faced the press conference. He was not handcuffed. The distraught hostage taker was even allowed to speak before the media for many minutes. Al Chiparay disclosed he did not leave his firearm behind and preferred to die than go to jail. That's the time the SWAT team contained and handcuffed him. Authorities recovered a short firearm and a magazine. Mayor Francis Zamora admitted they knew the hostage taker was carrying a gun. The National Union of Journalists of the Philippines or NUJP criticizes the PNP's action. Una, medyo hindi tayo convinced doon sa sinasabi nga ng PNP. Um, number one, doon sa pag-alaw na mag-press con yung stage taker, no? Na hindi natin alam kung ano yung uh, daladala niya, hindi alam ng public na nandun kung ano yung gamit na nasa kawan niya. PNP Chief Archie Gamboa explains that was part of their operation. In some aspects of police operations, just like the military, we cannot divulge everything. Even Mayor Francis Zamora said such measure intended to calm down the suspect and prevent him from causing further chaos. Speaking before the media was one of the hostage takers' demands. Marami kasi kaming mga discussions kanina, maraming uh, points for negotiation. Pero sabi ko, sige, I will assure him. In fact, nung kausap ko na siya sa telepono, kumalma na rin siya. Ang gusto niyo lang talaga ay uh, makalabas ng ligtas. Earl Victor Rosero, a veteran journalist, asked why the media personalities were so close with the suspect, where was crowd control? According to the Incident Investigation and Review Committee that was created through a joint administrative order by the Justice and the Interior Departments in 2010, when it comes to standard operating procedures such as civil disturbance and hostage negotiations, the PNP is the lead agency. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. President Rodrigo Duterte gives Immigration Commissioner Jaime Morente a chance to resolve the corruption problems in his bureau, particularly the Pastillas bribery scheme. Rosalie Cos reports why. 
Immigration Commissioner Jaime Morente was among those who attended a 47th cabinet meeting of President Rodrigo Duterte last night in which the issue on the so-called Pastillas bribery scheme that allegedly involves immigration personnel was discussed. According to Malacanang, the action plan to prevent corruption and anomalies in airport terminals was also discussed. The palace adds President Duterte is giving Commissioner Morente a chance to implement this. I think he's, he's, he's giving Commissioner Morante a chance to do something about the problem in the immigration. The chief executive defended the immigration chief and stood by Morente's integrity. However, this does not mean that Morente has been excluded from the investigations into the Pastilla scheme according to the palace. President Duterte has earlier dismissed all immigration officials and personnel in the Ninoy Aquino International Airport who are involved in accepting bribery from Chinese nationals who want to enter the country smoothly. There is nobody who is exempted from any investigation when there is a complaint of corruption. Regardless of who you are, if there is a complaint, you will be investigated. The National Bureau of Investigation will investigate the reported corruptions in airport terminals. The NBI also aims to get to the bottom of the issue of human trafficking that involves mostly overseas Filipino workers as well as the escort or facilitation services for foreign nationals who enter the country without proper documentation. Rosa Licoz, UNTV, News and Rescue, Malacanã. Amid the removal of Congressman Isidro Ungab as chairman of the Appropriations Committee, Hugpong ng Pagbabago releases a statement to condemn, condemn such a move. For Congressman Paulino Salvador Lechon, it is but a smokescreen to cover the term-sharing agreement in the House of Representatives. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. House Speaker Alan Peter Caetano has followed through on his statement that members of the House of Representatives who do not want to work with him ought to leave their posts. With the removal of Davao City 3rd District Representative Isidro Ungab as Chairman of the Committee on Appropriations and of Oriental Mindoro Representative Paulino Salvador Liachon as Contingent Head of the Electoral Tribunal of the House of Representatives, Speaker Caetano says the two were more interested with funds and intrigues than getting things done. This action prompted the hugpo ng pagbabago headed by Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio to release a statement condemning the removal of Congressman Ungab from the post. For the HNP, Ungab's removal is unacceptable and disadvantages to the Duterte administration's reform agenda. But for Oriental Mindoro Representative Paulino Salvador Lechon, Speaker Caetano's action is just a smokescreen to cover up the term-sharing agreement on the House Speakership. You've been telling that there was a coup in order to, as I said, a smokescreen para ipagtaguan mo yung tunay na dahil na gusto mo magtagal sa posisyon para dire-diretso yung enjoyment ng kasamahan or ikaw particular ka sa iyong probinsya to the detriment of other members. Despite his removal, Liachon said he accepts the House leadership's decision, saying he has expected it since he issued a statement in defense of Marinduque Representative Lord Alan Velasco. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News & Rescue, House of Representatives. Why News continue. Authorities admit that they allow the hostage taker of yesterday's turmoil to conduct a press conference despite the danger it poses. Asher Kadapan Jr. will tell us why. National Capital Region Police Office Director Police Major General Debold Sinas explains that authorities acted by the situation necessary in the hostage taking that transpired in V Mall, Green Hills, in San Juan City yesterday. Authorities believe they exerted all efforts to seize the disarray with the least casualty. Police personnel together with San Juan City Mayor Francisco Zamora sought to acknowledge hostage taker Alchi Parai's demand in exchange for the release of all hostages who were all employees of the mall. According to Sinas, there were 55 hostages. Armed with a pistol gun in his waist, authorities reconsidered Parai's demand to conduct a press conference as he simply wanted his concerns to be heard. But Sinas was confident with the five of NCRPO's top snipers in the area ready for an assault in case he pulls out his gun. It's judgment call. It's between uh, one person versus 40. 
So you just imagine if we keep on insisting na wag dalhin yun, hindi sila mag siya lalabas. So it's a judgment call. I'm confident that my snipers could take tal sa kanya headshot. Authorities were thankful that it all ended with no death and with all the hostages released for safety. Zamora, on the other hand, confirmed that the four security personnel of the mall who were forced to resign will be assisted in their transfer to another company, but warned that investigations will be conducted against them based on Parai's allegations. The city executive plans to also demand from V Mall management to overhaul the security system of the mall to ensure safety not only of mall goers but also of its constituents. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, San Juan City. Senator Ronald De La Rosa wants to revoke outright the license of drivers who will test positive for illegal drug use. Arlene Delgado reports why. During the hearing of Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, the Land Transportation Office said they revoke a driver's license on the third offense. The LTO also noted that drug testing is no longer a requirement and applying for a driver's license. According to LTO's data, out of more than 4,000 public utility vehicle drivers who had been subjected to random drug testing, 116 tested positive. <laughs> positive ka sa drug use, nagdadrive ka, dapat once lang yan, hindi na maulit. So, to give it uh, sa ating uh, batas. Another problem that the agency noted is the lack of consolidation of violation records by the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, local government units, and other enforcing agencies. According to the LTO, only the cities of Valenzuela and Paranaque are connected to its database. This is also the reason why a bus driver can continue driving despite incurring almost 500 violations. Even day you're on, you have that no contact apprehension and uh, it takes time for them to transmit their violations to LTO because one challenge is the connectivity issue. As part of its efforts, the LTO will require a series of driving seminars to all licensed applicants starting April this year. De La Rosa, together with Senator Francis Tolentino, also wants to include in the driver's license whether the driver had previously tested positive for illegal drugs and underwent drug rehabilitation. In the future printing of your cards, Pwede natin sa card mismo ilagay talaga para markando na siya. Yung driver's license, pag hawak-hawak ng isang driver, pupunta sa banko, may ikiklaim ang driver's license mo. Pag nakita niya, uy, atik pala ito, ingat-ingat tayo doon. Guard, bantayan mo yan. So, na nakamarka na yun eh. However, for the Commission on Human Rights, the proposal unfairly discriminates especially for those who have undergone rehabilitation. According to the group, this may hinder them to fully reintegrate to the society or could even push them back to drug use and sale. Senator Tolentino also wants to amend the Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act for drug users who voluntarily surrendered for rehabilitation to be admitted to medical facilities without a court order. René Villapando, the father of grade 8 student Jules Villapando, who got killed by a speeding jeepney in Makati City last month, whose driver tested positive for illegal drug use, is hopeful that authorities will finally act on the matter. Sana, hindi po ito magiging ingas po po na sinasabi mo ba na hanggang bago lang may pinagawa. Huwag na po natin itay sa mga anak natin kung yari mo, yari sa natin. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue Senate of the Philippines. 1,000 hogs have recently been culled in four barangays in Laurel, Batangas. Several local hog racers await financial assistance from the government. Sherwin Kulabong explains why. The town of Laurel in Batangas has not fully recovered from the effects of the Taal Volcano's eruption in January. Now it is facing another challenge. Several hogs in the locality have contracted African swine fever or ASF. The Municipal Agriculture Office has recorded ASF cases in barangays Balakilong, Molinete, as East and Poblacion Uno. According to Municipal Agriculturist Antonina Gardiola, the swines in Laurel easily contracted the hog disease during the lockdown implemented after the volcanic eruption when hog racers could barely feed the animals that were left in pig pens and backyards. Sa opinion ko, ay marahil ay eh, dahil kami ay na-lockdown, 
ay itong mga pagpapakain ng ating mga hayupan na talagang kumakain sila five times a day ay halos doon sa apat na araw na sunod-sunod yung mga hindi nakakalusot dahil nga lockdown hindi na talaga kumain. Maaaring humina ang resistensya ng ating mga kababuyan. More than 1,000 pigs have been culled due to ASF in the four barangays, while 1,000 more are set to be confiscated by the local government for culling. Pangunawa lang po at kooperasyon ang ibigay nila sa amin sapatkat sa ngayon po ay talagang sagaran ang ginagawa namin o kooperasyon para po ito ay hindi na umabot yung buhat sa 1 kilometer na talagang na-confirm na may ASF ay huwag nang kumalat sa 7 kilometers. Rodel Pornea is one of the hog racers in Barangay Molinete. All his pigs were confiscated by authorities. Ito parang padalwan lugay, nagkamurahan ng baboy. Tat, walang baboy ang aking nalaga, lugay ako ng kulang-kulang na 30 bago ngayon, alaga ulit. Wala, naharvest naman ng ganyan. Walang bayad. Rodel and other local hog owners whose pigs had been culled have received 3,000 pesos from the local government as financial assistance. They also await the 5,000 peso assistance per culled or confiscated hog. Hindi pa tunay na nakakabangon sa taal. Ay di kami tunay na nakiusap sa national government maging sa provincial government. The local government of Laurel has laid out measures to prevent the spread of ASF in the town. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTB News and Rescue, Laurel, Batangas. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, Diego. Indonesia's Mount Merapi volcano erupted on Tuesday morning, sending a six-kilometer column of ash into the air and triggering the closure of the airport in the nearby city of Solo on the densely populated Java Island. Indonesia's Volcano Observatory Notice for Aviation issued a red alert and said the ash cloud was moving north. The international airport in Solo had been temporarily shut since 9.25 a.m. local time. Four flights had been affected. The local disaster mitigation agency warned people to keep out of a three-kilometer exclusion zone around Merapi. The country's Geological Disaster Technology Research and Development Center said the eruption lasted almost eight minutes and warned of a risk of further eruptions due to continuing movements of magma. Twitter has told its employees to work from home to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. In a blog post, the social media giant said it was mandatory for staff in Hong Kong, Japan and South Korea to work remotely. The company also said it was strongly encouraging all of its 5,000 employees around the world to not come into work. It comes a day after the firm banned all non-essential business travel and events for its workers. The company had already announced that it was pulling out of this month's South by Southwest Media Conference in Austin, Texas. In just 48 hours, a group of scientists completed the DNA sequencing of the deadly coronavirus. Meanwhile, the Hong Kong government has decided to evacuate their citizens stranded in Hubei province, the epicenter of the out coronavirus outbreak, a month later. Beverly Saison will tell us why. In Hong Kong, Chief Executive Carrie Lam has arranged four charter flights to bring back 533 of its residents from the Chinese province of Hubei, the center of the coronavirus outbreak. Lam said the flights would return on Wednesday, March 4th and Thursday, March 5th, and those coming back would be quarantined for 14 days upon arrival. The announcement comes at about a month after countries around the world began evacuating their citizens. More than 3,800 Hong Kong residents in more than 30 cities in Hubei, of which Wuhan is capital, had asked the government of the Chinese-ruled semi-autonomous city for help since the outbreak began in the province. In Europe, the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control has leveled up the risk of COVID-19 from moderate to high for people living or traveling in Europe. The Commission decided to set up a special work group to assist the member states of the European Union to take synchronized measures in some relevant fields affected by the epidemic. 
Earlier, the commission said at least 18 of the 27 EU member states have confirmed COVID-19 cases and reported 40 deaths from the disease. And in Brazil, just days after the country's first coronavirus case was confirmed, scientists in Brazil have sequenced the virus DNA to better understand and tackle the feared epidemic. With a DNA map of coronavirus, scientists hope that they can better monitor the virus and hopefully speed up the availability of a vaccine. At the weekend, Brazil's health ministry confirmed the country's second case of the fast-spreading new coronavirus. Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Kath Dumaraos, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. The water concessionaires and MWSS have yet to agree on using Manila Bay as another source of water supply in Metro Manila. Joe Anano tells us why. To avoid possible recurrence of water shortage in Metro Manila, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources is proposing to use Manila Bay as an additional source of water to supply Metro Manila residents with. But this would require the establishment of a desalination plant, which is expensive. Given the quality of water in Manila Bay, the desalination plant needs to be run using a huge amount of electricity to treat the water. This process would in turn result in higher water rates. Mainilad explains, the operational cost in the desalination of Manila Bay will be around 50 pesos per cubic meter, which is much more expensive compared with the 4 pesos per cubic meter cost in Laguna Lake. Kung sakali maaprobahan, ay tataas yung tarifa ng aming masisingo sa customers. Kaya nga ito po ay hindi pa, hindi pa namin uh, napag-aagrihan na nagamitin ng NWSS. For Manila Water, on the other hand, the proposal needs to undergo a comprehensive study both on technical and economic standpoints. The water allocation for Metro Manila remains at 42 cubic meters per second as the water level in Angat Dam continues to decrease. As of 6 a.m. today, the water level in Angat Dam went down to 200 meters from 202.16 meters yesterday. With this, Mayniland and Manila Water will continue to strictly implement water service interruptions among their customers. This move aims to manage the water supply until the dry season. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The NHA Builders coach is content with the team's performance this season despite failing to advance to the final round. They vow to come back stronger next season. Bernard Dadis tells us why. For the second time, NHA Builders finished third place in the League of Public Servants. The Builders defeated two-time champion Judy Shannon Magis in the battle for third match last Sunday with final scores 75-67. The NHA capitalized in great ball movement and tough defense. With five Rainbow Country shots from Alvin Bitug and another five from Antonio Nustestica, the Builders dominated outside shooting. And now John, the six out of 23 attempts of Judy Jerry. Alvin Brito was hailed as the best player of the game with 25 points. Dustestica contributed 19 points and John Derek Bison added 12 points. Warren Ibanez led the Magis with 27 points and Vincent Puno 10 points. Magis Chester Tolomeo was forced to play despite an injury to contribute for the team's campaign. NHA placed fourth during season four and six and improved to third place in season seven and this season. According to Builders head coach Bennett Pallad, he's still proud of his boys for the teamwork and improvement this season. Nagpapasalamat pa rin ako sa Diyos at binigay sa amin third place. Medyo, mas maganda ngayon yung performance dahil may yung chance namin ngayon nandun eh. Kaya lang nagkaroon lang ng konting ano lang. Coach Bennett added they will work even harder to finally achieve a UNTV Cup trophy. Sana continue kami supportahan, lalo lalo na for next year. Maasahan nyo na ibibigay namin lahat ng magagawa namin para makuha na natin yung championship. Badges also promised to double their effort in practicing for Season 9 after a long rest. 
coach Joey Yabut was also thankful for the team's improvement from 8th spot last season to 4th spot this season. Nagpapasalamat ako sa supporter ng judiciary, uh, lalong-lalo na kay Kuya Daniel na walang sawa rin sumusuporta sa UNTV Cup. Salamat Kuya! NHA will receive 1 million pesos which they will donate to their beneficiary, the NHA Provident Fund. All the matches will donate their half million pesos prize to their fellow judiciary employees affected by calamities. Burger Daddies, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant soundbites. I am William Theo. And I am Angelo Castro III, because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. In the last 24 hours, there were almost nine times more cases reported outside China than inside China. The epidemics in the Republic of um, uh, Korea, Italy, Iran, and Japan are our greatest concern. Alam mo, galing China, uh, binuboarding namin yan with complete gadget ang mga boarding official namin. Tapos, uh, pinadidischarge namin ang cargo kung wala pang incubation period. Then, we advise the captain and the agent no with restriction, no discharging, uh, no disembarking and embarking of crew. Una, medyo hindi tayo convinced doon sa sinasabi nga ng TNT. Um, number one, doon sa pag-alaw na mag-press con yung stage taker, no? Na hindi natin alam kung ano yung uh, daladala niya, hindi alam ng public na nandun kung ano yung gamit na nasa kawan niya. There was even a question why allow him to go on a press conference. The reason behind there is tactical. You've been telling that there was a coup in order to, as I said, a smokescreen para ipagtagawa mo yung tunay na dahilan na gusto mo magtagal sa posisyon para dire-diretso yung enjoyment ng kasamahan o ikaw particular ka sa iyong probinsya to the detriment of other members. Pag uh, nahuli ka na uh, positive ka sa drug use, nag-drive ka, at once lang yan, hindi na maulit. So, to give it uh, sa ating uh, batas.